In this lesson, we're going to be learning about linear models. And linear models have been used many times by all of you, particularly a good place we see application is in science when you're doing an experiment. Problem is, when we're dealing with linear equations and then try and work with things in the real world, very rarely do things in the real world fall to a perfectly straight line. So a linear model is a way of finding a best way of modeling this information, taking consideration the highs and lows that happen. Vocabulary for this lesson includes scatterplot, correlation, and regression. Now, a scatterplot is a graph that relates two sets of data by plotting the data's ordered pairs. If you're doing an experiment in science where you're measuring temperature over time, your temperature is your dependent or your y variable, time is your independent or your x variable, and you can plot them on a graph. Next, we have correlation, which is the strength of the relationship between data sets. You can see at the bottom we have several different items or several different graphs down here that show different amounts of correlation, and we're going to be working with each of these. Basically, we can split them up into different groups. The ones on the left here are negative, simply because they are moving down. The ones on the right are positive, because the general trend is that they are moving up. What's in the middle here is no correlation. And inside of the negative or the positive, we have strong correlation items where they keep pretty close together and we have weak ones which means that they're pretty spread out but do follow that trend. Now overall with all this we can also talk about the regression of a data set. And when we talk about regression we're talking about a line of best fit that models the data and tells how accurate the data is for making predictions or how accurate that line is. Um, along with our regression we have what's called a correlation coefficient and we'll talk about that a little in this lesson as we work on uh, using technology in order to do this work. So let's take a look at how some of this will all play out. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make a scatter plot and we're going to use this data the table shows the number of students, number of hours students spent online the day before a test and the scores that they got on that test. First thing we'll do is make a scatter plot, and then how would we describe the correlation? So what we have to do is we have to figure out on this data set what is our independent variable and what is our dependent. Now I already have the axes set up, so it kind of helps towards that, but does the number of hours worked control the score? Does the, number, does the score control the number of hours worked online? Now, some of that work online could be good or it could be just play and keeping you from doing your stuff. But what it tends to be is that the number of hours that was spent online will control the end score. So let's plot on our x-axis the hours spent online our y-axis is the score received on the test. And let's just start plotting some points here. So our first set is zero hours. Person got a hundred percent on the test. Next, another person spent zero hours online and they only got about a 94 on the test. One hour spent online garnered a 98 percent on the test and one hour spent online gave us an 88% on the test. You can tell already that the, this is not a function because for one input we have multiple outputs. But a line of best fit or a regression line doesn't have to simply use the data from one function. Um, we will create that line. But as we continue to go through and plot points, we will end up with a scatter plot that looks something like this. So how can we best describe this correlation? Well overall as our number of hours spent online increases the amount scored on the test is decreasing. 
So we are looking at a negative correlation. And that simply means that the trend is going down. Now, would we classify this as a strong negative or a weak negative? Overall, the data points here are sticking pretty close together along the central line. So I'm going to call this a strong negative correlation. And once we have our data set placed in and set up, there's a lot of things that we can do with it. Let's look at making a trend line. So here we are with our same data set, and we want to draw a line of best fit and write the equation of that line. So in order to make a line of best fit, what we need to do is draw a line that follows the overall trend and moves through the center of the data. Same amount of points uh, typically are above the data line as what's below it, but it is in the end a little bit of interpretation into this. There is a higher level way of calculating that and we will get to that as we move further into our study of Algebra 2. But overall, our trend line is going to be something along this path. You can see we have we do have a few more data points above the line than we have below it and then even have a couple of data points on the line and but the distances away from the line if we look at straight vertical distance are about the same if we were to add them all together because the ones that are below are further off now we need to write an equation that fits this line in order to do that we need a couple of points that lie exactly on the line so let's take this point here that our graph appears to pass through and this one here and use those to write our equation. So going back to our data set, those points were 0, 100 and 4 and a half, 57. So first thing up is let's find a slope. Our slope is going to be 57 minus 100 divided by four and a half minus zero. Now 57 minus 100 will give us 43. When we divide that by four and a half, we have a slope that is approximately a negative 9.56. Next, what is our y-intercept? Well, because it does pass through the point zero 100, 100 is our y-intercept, and our overall equation becomes y equals a negative 9.56x plus 100. And what this tells us overall is that you can figure on a 100% score, although that's a little bit ambitious, but with each extra hour that you spend online the day before a test, just having recreational internet time, going to lose about nine and a half percent on your test. So if we were to follow this all the way out, if you were to spend 11 hours online, you would have to score a zero, but you'd also probably have no sleep, so that might be a little bit more believable than you'd first think. So how do we take from doing this, making a line of best fit or a guess as we are seeing, and put it into technology in order to have our calculators calculated out for us. Let's take a look at that next. So the table lists the cost of 2% milk. We're going to use a scatter plot to find the equation of a line of best fit and then based on our model how much would we expect to pay for 2% milk in 2025. We're going to use 1997 as our year zero. So a lot of things going on here let's break it down. First 1997 is year zero so this becomes year one 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. And if we go out to 2025, that becomes year number 28. Next, what is our average cost per gallon, and how can we 
put this out. Well, in your calculator, you will have a way of entering the data set. And each calculator is different, but once you find your location for entering that, you will have two columns. You will have a list one and a list two. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our year information, our independent variable, put in list one, and then our cost information into list two. Once you have all the data entered, you will find a menu that says calc, and then you'll take that into regression, and then you will find linreg, which means a linear regression. A lot of times they have two different options. You can go AX plus B or A plus BX. Either one will come out with the same end information. It's just you're used to seeing slope and then y-intercept or y-intercept and then slope. Once this data that we have here is entered in and we calculate it out, we receive the following information. Using the setup of AX plus B, my calculator is telling me A equals 0 0.093 B is equal to 2.4536, and that 6 is repeating. Then I get an R value, which is 0 0.906, and an R squared of 0 0.8216. And what these do is A here is going to be my slope. B is going to be my y-intercept, meaning that in year zero, or 1997, milk costs about $2.45 a gallon. Then, our A value is our slope. Each increasing year from 1997, it's going up about nine cents per gallon. So, our equation comes out looking like y equals 0.093x plus 2.45. And we can even round this off and get rid of that 3 there. So, what would the cost of a gallon of milk be in 2025? We simply substitute in that 28 for our x value, and we get the fact or the prediction that milk is going to cost four dollars and ninety seven cents per gallon in 2025. So we can use the technology to speed it up, get more accurate, and we can even use it to draw the graph for us and help us make these predictions. Our R value that we had here real fast is how accurate our information is. The closer we are to one or negative one will tell us how well everything holds to that line. It is our regression or our correlation coefficient. So this one you could say is about 90 percent accurate. If we were to have a negative 0 0.90 it simply means we had a negative correlation. But here as time goes on things are becoming more expensive. So make sure you have this information down and are ready to use it as we both here and in the future as we study probability and statistics.